When it comes to homes, there is so much that we need to understand about air tightness that I think is being missed. And I just wanted to make an example out of clothes dryers for a moment. So let's imagine that we've got this home plan. We're looking at this from above. And so we've got main kitchen area, living space, hallway with bedrooms and bathrooms off of it, things like that. Somewhere in this home is going to be a laundry room. And if you're a normal American, you're going to want this 2,000 square foot home to have a laundry room inside. In other countries, they might not have to worry about this particular example that I'm using today because they might have the laundry outside in a dirty kitchen in Asia or in the garage or maybe not even have a laundry machine and use line drying clothes to dry. The issue with a clothes dryer is that it is a one-way exhaust fan. And when you start building substantially airtight, and I'm not even talking about crazy airtight, like you'll see on our channel, on the Build Show Network, people trying to chase really insane airtightness levels. And I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about a substantially airtight, meaning a tightness level that I personally, as a blower door testing professional, have tested a, a builder first time out. They've never been tested before. And I come out and blow two ACH50, which code is only going to ever require builders probably to build to three ACH50. That's air changes per hour at 50 pascals, which is the point that we get every house to with a blower door. Two ACH50 is tighter than code will ever require. So it's future proofed, but it's not so tight where if you have watched the video that I'm looking on screen right now about how you need to start moving towards ERV to exhaust out of bathrooms because you just can't even deal with a single 50 CFM bath fan, that becomes too much of a problem. That's not the neighborhood we're in. We're in the neighborhood where you could do this if you're using WRB sheathing, meaning you've got like some kind of a taped uh, airtight layer somewhere in your assembly. You're using spray foam or you're using aero barrier, which is kind of a plug and play fix a flat for homes that you just didn't want to pay attention to until you just the day comes for the air sealing day. In any of those cases, you could definitely achieve this. This is not a hard thing. So let's imagine that this is a 2,000 square foot house. And what we can see is that when we come over to our handy calculator here, which is Red Calc, which is owned by the Department of Energy, it's inside of the Building America Solution Center. I'm linking it in the video description here. You can see that in the depreciation analysis calculator, we have a building leakage at 50 pascals of 600. That is a 2,000 square foot house, this, with nine foot ceilings. 2,000 times nine is 18,000 cubic feet. You take 18,000, and you divide by 60. Take any volume, divide by 60, and it gives you a magic number. That number is, in this case, what we're using as the 1 ACH 50 number. That is 300 CFM 50. We're not going to aim for that super air tightness like I was saying. Let's aim for 2 ACH 50. That's 600. So here we've got 600 CFM 50. And if we, in that house, blow 150 CFM out, what we have solved for now is we know that we will depressurize that house, and this is with all doors being open, which I'm gonna come back to in a moment, to six pascals. You might not know what six pascals feels like. You could definitely feel that. Like if you closed a door and there's six pascals of pressure difference between the room that you were in and the room that you're in now, you could feel a breeze coming out of there. This is enough that if there was that much pressure inside of a bedroom, for example, the bedroom starts saying, hey, I don't want any more air. I can't handle it to the heat pump or furnace or whatever it is that's pushing that air. And then that device, that conditioning device, just starts sending the air someplace else. That's when you step out of a room in the morning and you realize that like, oh, the hallway is a different temperature than the room I just came out of. So this is a significant pressure. What this means is number one, we could backdraft any atmospheric drafted water heater that we have in the house. And if you have it in the garage, that doesn't really necessarily mean you're safe. I've got videos about that too, because you've got other things that induce weird pressures in the house. And also some garages are totally connected to the house, uh, to the living space. The other thing that it means is that we can backdraft any furnaces that are in the house. We could definitely backdraft chimneys. If you have a fireplace in this house, we just can't deal with this amount. You, about two pascals is what I've personally seen in clients' homes. The house starts using the chimney as a makeup air pathway. So you start sucking in through the chimney. And that's really not something that you want. The other thing that starts to happen, aside from these weird pressure effects that we're having on this house, remember all doors being open, six pascals, is that the fan that is inside of that vented dryer cannot possibly dry your clothes. 
So you'll hear a lot when you go online and you start looking into heat pump dryers, which is the solution that I'm gonna recommend in just a moment here, that they'll, people will say, it takes too long to dry your clothes. What we're showing here is that a vented dryer takes too long to dry your clothes. And it's not the dryer's fault. I have a video with Scott True that I'm linking on screen right now about an investigation into a home where they had the dryer wasn't drying clothes. They had to run two cycles every single time. Scott's like, hey, no problem. We're gonna replace the dryer. It came with the house. Go buy the dryer. And before they put it in, we did these diagnostics that I show in the video. And we found out that it's not the dryer's fault. In fact, if you were to go out and buy a like for like dryer and replace that, it, the problem would persist. If you went out and bought a more powerful dryer, the problem would get worse at that point. So replacing it with another vented dryer is just not the solution. So the solution at this point is a heat pump dryer, which is ventless, no exhaust fan to outside. Uh, now at this point, we have taken away that pressure. Now, remember, we were talking about all doors being open. You suck on this 2,000 square foot house with nine foot ceilings with 150 CFM, which is what all dryers in residential space are generally rated for. And you're going to depressurize this place to negative six pascals. Of course, no one is going to do that. The very first door you will be closing in this house, if this is the laundry room, we're going to be closing that door. And at that point, we're not depressurizing the whole house to six anymore. Maybe we're depressurizing the whole house to like four, but we're depressurizing this tiny room massively. And so now the problem is even weirder because now I'm depressurizing part of my house a lot and part of it a little. And who knows what's going to happen now with air leakage, with humidity, with contaminants, with things like radon, you could start to have weird effects on. So your solution, again, heat pump dryer. As soon as you're done watching this video, you're going to think to yourself, yeah, but what if I just provide makeup air for this room? Let's do that. Uh, so let's just imagine, for example, that you have a window in this laundry room, which is lucky because you've got it on, on an exterior wall. So we're going to open up this window right here and we're going to let air come in. First thing that you need to do is make sure that you open the window enough and you could just kind of suss this out in real life. Uh, but what that means is let's imagine that this room is uh, six feet wide and 12 feet long. 12 by six is 72 square feet times nine foot ceiling height is 648 cubic feet of air. We divide by 60 because volume divided by 60 gives you that geometric one air change per hour rate. That number is 10.8. Let's just round down to 10 for a second because it makes more sense for what I'm about to do. We're not gonna be exhausting 10 CFM out of this room and thereby replacing all the air in this room one time in that hour. We're running again, if, if the dryer works the way that you want it to, because you're doing this makeup air specifically to make the dryer vent like it's supposed to, you're running 150 CFM. That means you're replacing all the air in this room 15 times in that one hour that it takes to run that dryer load. This room is now exactly like outside conditions. If it is 90 degrees and raining outside, it is 90 degrees and 100% relative humidity in this room. If you like mold, go ahead and do that. And by the way, that goes for not just opening a window in this room, but let's say that the laundry room is here. If this was the laundry room, we would need to pipe makeup air into that room, in which case you'd want to use the makeup air calculator that I'm linking on screen right now in that video that I demonstrate. And this room now would become exactly like outside. You just kind of can't avoid that. So just FYI, this is the kind of problem that I keep coming up against time and time again. Uh, I have clients who literally just bought a dryer. They're so happy with it in their house that they're in and they're about to move into their new house that they've designed and we're working on it together and it's like, oh yeah, you can't use a vented dryer. And we do the calculation and they're like, you know what? I think I have to just go in and try it. Cool. Best way to learn is the hard way. And so if you wanna go ahead and make this mistake for yourself, that is, you will know it. You will like have the Kool-Aid inside of you. You're bathing in the Kool-Aid right now and that's nice, but it's outside. When you get it in you, then you'll be like, oh my gosh, now I have to go make a video about why ventless dryers are so important in modern homes. So I hope that this all makes sense. There's a lot more to explore on this topic. And of course, that's why we continue to make roughly two videos a week 
with me standing in front of this or getting on my laptop or, or going out in the field. So please do subscribe if you're not already because we do a lot of this stuff. If you have things that I did not cover in this video and you want to comment or question about those, please do. If you have experience with this, please do share that in the comments too because people like to see that as well. Thanks for watching. Tune in next time.